Welcome to Red Speak. Here we present the classiest stories of cheating and revenge from Reddit. Today's story is about Wife cheated and got pregnant with a scientist. Said she wanted a child with good genes. I am a 32-year-old man, married to my ex-wife, Sophie, for two years. Sophie and I were lovebirds. And even as I share this story, it still surprises me that Sophie cheated on me after all we have been thruffed together. Sophie and I were not strangers when we started dating. As children, we grew up in the same neighborhood and were very familiar with each other. Sadly, when I was 15 or so, her parents moved to a new house and we lost contact. Many years later, coincidentally, we bumped into each other as adults. Even as a child who didn't know so much about love, I knew I was crushing on Sophie. And when we bumped into each other as an adult, the fire rekindled. We spoke for some time and exchanged our contacts. Luckily, Sophie was single at that time, and after hanging out for weeks, I asked her to be my girlfriend, and she said yes. We dated for a year before getting married. I know this might sound simple, but I loved Sophie and felt complete when we married. Many things had changed about her, but she was still the intelligent, witty, and energetic Sophie I knew when we were children. She became a teacher for junior high school while I worked in an automobile shop as a mechanic. Between Sophie and I, Sophie was the most intelligent, and she had a thing for smart people. Personally, I loved everyone I met. I wasn't particularly looking for intelligent people like Sophie did, which was the major difference between us. When we were catching up and hanging out, I used to feel like I was out of her league. But after I got to know her better, and we fell deeply in love with each other, I got more secure. But I always put in extra effort to keep her happy. Our marriage was fun, sweet, and full of laughter. She made being married so much fun and peaceful. We barely fought or argued about things. When we were dating, Sophie told me that she hated being yelled at. So she made me promise that I would never yell at her, no matter how angry I was. I promised her I wouldn't raise my voice at her for any reason, and she did the same. So if we were having an argument, it would sound like a very intense conversation, but no voices raised. Regarding our opinions on children, Sophie and I belonged to the same school of thought. We didn't think it was important to wait years before having children. To me, doing that did not make sense. I preferred to have a child a year or two after marriage so our child would grow with us as we grew older and not wait to have my first child in old age. So, immediately after we married, we started trying to get pregnant. There were times Sophie would miss her period, and she would think she had gotten pregnant, only for her period to come the next day. Aside from that, in the first year of our marriage, she got pregnant once but she miscarried after a month, and we lost the baby. This was a very emotional moment for us, because we had been waiting for months to get pregnant. And after she successfully got pregnant, we lost it. After she lost her first pregnancy, we took a break for a while before we tried again, and unfortunately, the same thing happened. She had another miscarriage at fifth week. The second time she miscarried, she woke up one morning and noticed she was bleeding heavily. When I took her to the hospital, it was confirmed that she miscarried. This took its mental tell on us. And for months, we could not even talk about getting pregnant again. I tried my best to support her during that season and to be strong for us. After a while, we forgot about everything and moved on. I knew she was going through a lot emotionally. So I decided I wouldn't mention anything related to having a child until she was completely over her last two miscarriages. Our marriage bounced back from the few months of pain and things returned to normal. Even after things were okay, I treated Sophie like a queen and did everything she wanted. Aside from going to school to teach the kids, she didn't do anything else at home. I took care of the cooking for months cleaned our house, did the laundry, mowed our lawns, shopped for groceries, and even cooked special meals for her on some days. 
I was very particular about how I made her feel because she thought something was wrong with her and she was bad luck. I knew she said them because of the miscarriages. At that time, my sole purpose was to assure her that there was absolutely nothing wrong with her. So I showered her with love and attention. About four months after we lost the second pregnancy, I was trying to clean up the house as usual on weekends, and she came to me with tears in her eyes. When I saw her, I was scared something terrible had happened to her. But when she told me she was pregnant, I was over the moon. I wasn't expecting to hear that from her anytime soon. Even though I didn't say it to her, I was partially scared that she would lose the baby again. But when she told me her pregnancy was over eight weeks old, I was on cloud nine. Funnily enough, she didn't even know she was pregnant. She said she had been feeling different and decided to do a test. Her periods were late, but she thought it was due to her hormonal issues. There were no signs of morning sickness, and her pregnancy took us by surprise. Later that same week, we went to see the doctor together to find out how we would prevent her from losing the pregnancy, and she was advised to not stress herself. Hearing that, I knew I had to step up my game in caring for Sophie. I did literally everything I could to make her comfortable. I didn't want anything to cause another miscarriage. Most importantly, I didn't want her to go through that pain again. Meanwhile, after we scanned and found out that she was giving birth to a boy, I was so excited to finally become a father. There's no particular reason, but I always wanted a son first and then a daughter. After the scan, I started shopping for the baby things we'd need. Every day, I woke up praying for the safety of Sophie and our baby. I was also excited to watch the baby grow in Sophie's stomach. I used to spend hours leaning on her baby bump, talking to the baby. Every bit of the moment felt magical to me. In her third month, Sophie said that she wanted to take a break from work so that she could focus on her health and the baby. I didn't see any problem in supporting her financially. I was, in fact, glad that she was so serious about her health and the baby. Fast forward to the sixth month of the pregnancy. Something happened that changed everything for us. One evening after dinner, Sophie was so exhausted that she dozed off on the couch. I couldn't take her to our room, so I got blankets for her and ensured she slept comfortably. Her phone was on the table with the rest of the cups and plates we used for dinner. As I was trying to clear the table, her phone chimed. I didn't pay attention or look at her screen when the first notification came in. But when I returned from the kitchen and the messages kept coming in, I thought to silence the notification because it might disturb Sophie's sleep. While trying to silence her phone, the messages kept coming on WhatsApp and Instagram. I got curious. Her phone had a fingerprint lock, so I accessed it with her fingerprint to see who had been repeatedly texting her. On accessing her phone, I saw that it was a contact she had saved with a single love emoji that kept texting her. I was curious to know who it was, and my heart sank when I opened the messages sent to her. From their conversation, I figured she was talking to a man who kept asking her, how's my baby doing today? And other questions related to her health and her pregnancy. I had to read their messages over and over to understand if he was a doctor, after digging enough, I found out he wasn't. At the same time, I was going through her Instagram. The same man sent her a message on Instagram, and he even added a picture of his private part. I wouldn't have known they were communicating on Instagram if he didn't send that message. It was through their Instagram chat that I found out Sophie had been cheating on me. I wanted to know who her affair partner was and what she saw in him that led her to cheat on me. When I went through his Instagram profile, I found out he was a scientist. I could not even believe it. It took me the whole night to realize that I wasn't dreaming. The most heartbreaking part was that I had been trying to take care of another man's child. I had been working my ass out to ensure he would be born into a comfortable home. That night, I picked up a few clothes and drove to my friend's house to spend the night. I could not stand Sophie after realizing she had been playing me all along. 
To even think that her affair partner knew she was married to me, he'd occasionally asked her if I was taking good care of her and the baby, and she'd say something like, yo, he's trying. Merely seeing that she said I was trying really pissed me off. I took over the full responsibility of the house, cared for her, cooked her favorite meals at weird hours of the night, massaged her neck and feet, and even dealt with her stupid mood swings. I was really shattered when I read that, it was very evil of her to cheat on me with another man, and then she lied to me about being the child's father. Around three in the morning, when Sophie woke up and I wasn't at home, she called to ask why I wasn't at home by that time. I replied to her coldly that I had to come to the automobile shop to take care of some unfinished business. I told her I would return home later in the morning, but I didn't. I didn't go home for four days, and she began to panic. When she kept calling, but I didn't take her call. She went to the automobile shop where I worked, and they told her I asked to take the whole week off to sort out some family issues. During those four days of staying away from home, I opened a fake Instagram account to do more findings about Sophie's affair partner. I learned he had been a scientist for years and even won a prestigious award. On the second day of my digging, I found that he was married to a woman who was a psychologist, and they had two kids together. Upon digging deeper, I got his wife's information. I reached out to her on Instagram. I didn't beat around the bush. I told her that her husband was having an affair with my wife and sent her the evidence. One more thing, when I saw all those chats on Sophie's phone, I took pictures of them, so I attached them as evidence. She replied on the next day to set up a meeting for us, and I met her on the fourth day, the day I returned home to Sophie. When we met, she kept saying she couldn't believe her husband was cheating on her, and I assured her he was. She even looked at the pictures of their conversation I had taken, and she was so heartbroken. She nearly passed out when I told her my wife was pregnant with her husband. So, after our meeting, she said she would confront her husband, and I told her I would do the same. I couldn't even pretend that I was not hurt because I was. I returned home that evening after four days of being away, and when Sophie saw me, she ran to me. Immediately I stepped into the sitting room, I told her I wanted to do a paternity test for the baby, and she was shocked. She asked why I suddenly wanted to do a paternity test, and I told her I wanted to be sure the baby was mine. As soon as I answered, she laughed and said I was being ridiculous and that she wouldn't do any paternity test because the baby was mine. I knew she was trying to be manipulative. If I didn't know the truth, her acting would have forced me to believe I was the father of her child. That day, I raised my voice at her for the first time in years, and she was shocked to see me react like that. The next thing I knew, she started crying and said I was accusing her of cheating on me and that she couldn't believe I would do such a thing after everything we had been through. I watched her as she cried and did her emotional blackmail thing. And when she was done with her manipulations, I insisted that I wanted a paternity test despite anything she condemned me of. I had printed out the photocopies of the pictures I had taken of her chat conversations. I threw those pictures on her face. She was shocked to see that I had found out her truth. After a moment of silence, she said that she was just flirting with the man and nothing physical had happened between them. Her reasons were so dumb that I didn't feel like arguing with her. I told her that any man referring to her baby as his baby is no joke, hence I need to see the paternity reports. After arguing for hours, she finally agreed to do the paternity test. Eventually, we did the paternity test, and when the results came out, it confirmed that the baby wasn't mine. By this time, Sophie knew it was useless for her to keep pretending so she started asking me for forgiveness. She lied that she got pregnant through a sperm donor and did not know who was the father of the child. I knew she was lying but was too angry and tired to confront her, so I left her in the hospital. I went back home and packed most of the things I needed. I was still packing some things when she came home and tried to stop me. 
At that moment I was at my peak anger and I could have done something unregrettable so I left the house. No matter how I try to explain how let down and heartbroken I was, I don't think any amount of words can express how I felt. While I was leaving the house, Sophie became dramatic and started calling me names. Despite all she did to make me stay, I left the house, and we didn't communicate for another week. She called me every day and sent different voicemails of her crying, shouting, and begging. It was almost like she had multiple personalities. Just two days ago, her parents called and rained abuse on me. They called me a deadbeat father and said I was the worst father any child could ever have. Honestly, I was in no mood for drama. So I wanted to quietly divorce Sophie without telling anyone about her infidelity. But knowing that she cheated on me and scattered everything with her hands, she still reported me to her parents, friends, and everyone who listened to her lies. I can't stand any other person calling me to say rubbish when I know so well that Sophie is the one they should all be calling names. Her parents have threatened with dire consequences if anything happened to their daughter or the unborn child. Even though the child is not mine, still a living being, I don't want that unborn to suffer, so I'm just keeping quiet until she delivers. Let's see what Reddit community has to say. I'm so sorry, Hop. That's really heavy. I think spending some time away from her when you did was a smart move. Like you said, I think it would have been hard not to do something you would have regretted. What on earth was she thinking? So she was going to have the baby and then raise this baby, pretending that you were the child all while seeing another man behind your back the entire time. How long has she been seeing this guy? What if the other babies weren't yours either? Gosh. How heartbreaking. I'm so sorry. Her parents are delusional. Just like her. They're so desperate for a baby they don't care where it came from. You are not responsible for whatever choices your wife made. If anything happens to the baby, it's on her. Not you. Let's dive into the update. Thank you for your comments. Someone here said something when I mentioned in my post that I wanted to divorce Sophie without any fuss. I wasn't joking when I said that. If you know what I have been through since Sophie's miscarriage, you will understand why I said I didn't want any more drama. I've had enough marital problems for one marriage. It even gets crazier when I wonder if Sophie had been cheating on me from the first year of our marriage. Some of you said marrying Sophie in a year was too fast. I believed I had known her since childhood, hence dating for a year never seemed less. Anyways, that's all in the past now. Last week, I made a public post on Facebook that insinuated that Sophie had broken my heart and scattered everything we had planned, and a Facebook friend of Sophie reached out to me after that. Some of Sophie's friends and colleagues are added to my Facebook. You know how social media works. He was a fellow teacher in Sophie's school, and he said there was something he needed to tell me about Sophie. I agreed to meet up with him, and he told me that Sophie had been having an affair with some of the fathers of her students. I didn't believe him when he told me until he showed me a very short video he had secretly recorded a long time ago. According to him, Sophie had a thing for the fathers of the intelligent kids in her class and it was almost like she was throwing herself at them. He claimed he was telling me because he wanted to help me dodge a bullet. In addition, he said the school was aware of Sophie's terrible acts, which was why she was fired from the school just after her pregnancy. I was so surprised when he told me that Sophie was fired months before she told me she had quit. It meant that the whole time I struggled to care for Sophie while neglecting myself, she had been cheating on me. It had to be the only explanation because her income did not change or drop. Every morning, she would dress up to work and return around her usual time by noon. She'd even come home to tell me how much fun she had in class with the kids, which were all lies. It would be an understatement if I said I felt used by Sophie. I had never been lied to, used, or manipulated like that by anyone. After everything I heard, I knew it was over between Sophie and me. Hearing all of those things stirred up a wave of anger in me that I didn't even know I had in me. 
Meanwhile, I contacted a lawyer to process our divorce papers. After we divorce, I'm not sure what I'll do next. Anyway, I will make another update as soon as I'm done with Sophie and all of her dramas. I look forward to your comments on this. Let's read the comments. Yes, the leaving work thing because she actually got fired makes sense now. And this guy told you a few months too late. Sorry, Top. Seems this bullet didn't dodge you after all. I'm sorry she used you like this, Op. Here's the next update. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement. Like you all said, if I take Sophie back, I'd be shooting myself in the leg. I no longer love her, and I feel no pity for her. If she could do such a terrible thing to me while I worked as hard as possible to be a good and supportive husband to her, and the child I believed was mine, she could kill me in my sleep. I'm not exaggerating. A woman like Sophie is capable of anything. So, I finally confronted her annoying parents who kept calling. In fact, I dropped the pictures of the conversation between her and her affair partner on their WhatsApp family group chat. And then I dropped a long voice note to explain everything to them in case anyone had reading issues. I dropped the pictures on the group chat before I confronted Sophie for the last time. I told her I knew she had been sleeping with me with multiple men, and the father of the child she was carrying was a scientist. The expression on her face showed that she wasn't expecting me to say that. She had already become lean because of the few days of crying, thinking, and begging me to talk to her. I thought she would continue begging me, but she already knew her pretense time was over. She became defensive and admitted that she was having an affair with the scientist. She even boldly told me she did it because she wanted good genes for her baby, not my weak and dumb genes. I never believed she would say that to me, but she did anyway. She didn't know that I had contacted her affair partner through his wife and told them I found out Sophie was a serial cheat. I knew that Sophie didn't show any remorse when she admitted to having an affair with him because she expected that his child support would come heavy. Unfortunately for her, because her affair partner wanted to fix things with his wife, he also insisted on a paternity test. When the results came out, it turned out he wasn't the father of the child either. Sophie slept with multiple partners during that time, me, the scientist guy, and the two other men, the father of her school kids, hence she could not tell who the father of her baby was. Two weeks later, after her AP found out he wasn't the father my lawyer sent her the divorce papers, which she refused to sign at first. She said I had ruined her life, and because of that, I had to stick with her. Very funny. On the other hand, when her parents found out she didn't know who the father of her child was, they disowned her in shame. Eventually, she signed the divorce papers, and we are no longer together. She tried to play a smart one on me and lost everything, including her family. Now, she'll have to raise the baby on her own. I wish her luck in finding the baby's father. Thank everyone who gave me the idea of contacting her AP in my last update. Thank you all. Let's read the comment. You ruined her life. Wow. The audacity. At least she'll have the baby she always wanted. But at what cost? Just meant she had to lose everything else. Let us know what you about the story. Thank you for joining us today on Red Speak. Please like and subscribe. Press the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Tune in next time.